everyone and welcome back to a quick update to my video yesterday to episode 190 where I explained did I say quick update why do I say quick update all the time it's not a quick update it's a full comprehensive long video Q and a video no it's not it's just welcome back to another episode of Unplugged TV Australia so in regards to my video I have done two days ago where I explained the vaccine for the PHEV. I read through all your comments. I, there, are too, there are too many for me to respond to all of them. So please excuse if I only pick certain of them and put a response on them. Some of you have made the calculation for your own PHEVs and said this calculation does not quite match what the dog actually shows. So something may not be correct. Well, I don't know exactly uh, what the calculation is, what it what it includes. Also, some of you guys have used cars, so maybe the car had a BMU reset before in the first life, before you got the car. We don't know all this kind of stuff. But what I have done is I have pinned Gerard's comment at the top of all the comments on this video on episode 190. You can just ask him directly what kind of calculations been done in the BMU and what kind of findings he had with the calculation. And maybe he can explain some of the differences you found. Um, I, To be honest, I don't know. And I also would like to comment of one of my viewers who left a couple of messages now on different videos and also on the Facebook forum. His name is Andre. He's uh, living in the US and has a question or has a statement in regards to the state of health showing by the BMU and the available range. So um, I'm just reading this one here. Uh, Andre says, I keep asking the same question over and over. Does state of health number affects the power the battery can take or the miles the car can drive? I'm afraid Mitsubishi don't care what state of health the BMU is reporting. You keep ignoring this. I'm afraid that if you would do your DB cam, I think he means the triple procedure, to your old battery, your range would still be the same. Yes, he's 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 correct. I ignored I ignored his comments for a while on Facebook and on my videos because he makes his point. He says the only true measurement about a degradation is to measure the energy the battery can take. And of course you can do this through the MMCS or you can have a meter in between or your EVSE may even show you the charged energy into the battery and if you keep a record of all these figures you can see over time it goes down so the battery will take less energy over time and this is probably a sign of degradation and I was kind of agreeing with him but I can't and I will tell you why and I think he's not correct the state of health in the car, what the BMU calculates, is very much responsible for how much capacity we can use. And this is why we see with declining state of health of the battery, the range goes down, the energy charge into the battery goes down. Of course, some of this is natural degradation in the battery, chemical processes taking place, the battery takes less energy over time of course but this is only a very very small fraction of this whole situation mostly the restriction that the battery can take the energy or can deliver the energy to drive the car is mostly restricted by the state of health of the BMU of the estimated state of health the reason I'm saying this is because I have experienced exactly this. So it is not like the engine kicks in at 3.7 volts and turns and the charging turns off at 4.1 volts. These are the two 4.1 is definitely something like a trigger point to stop the charging for the BMU and the 3.7 is maybe a trigger point for the engine to be kicked in. 
while 3.7 volt is on a relative flat area on the discharge curve of the cell it is hard to determine what kind of state of charge the battery actually has it can be at 32 or 33 percent or it could be at 24 percent state of charge and the voltage shows almost the same so there's a very very fine difference only in between and you probably remember from my episode number two <laughs> all the way back 2017 when I picked up the car after the dealership has done a BM, BMU reset on my car and nothing else was done there was no DB cam there was nothing else just a reset which brought back the state of health of the battery to 100% I did some measurement before that and I still got the battery cards for that in my PHEV watchdog actually so I checked all these numbers and figures and I could not see any variation in voltages before the reset and after the reset. So still this 3.7 volt to trigger the engine and 4.1 volts to stop the charging, they still apply before and after the reset. But here comes the big but, the actual range was restored to 50 kilometers plus. The first drive I did was 59 kilometers on pure electric on the highway. This is episode four or so. And also, also the energy the battery took after the reset was restored from only seven kilowatt hours before the reset to over 10 kilowatt hours after the reset. So the battery was actually able to take this charge and the battery would not be able to take this huge amount of charge if the battery was already degraded. And that's what I always said. I think the battery is fine in the car. It is just the software. And then we have seen this deep decline of state of health again in my, in my battery in my car here because the BMU did not know what to do. It had no bearing to the actual capacity of the battery. It started at the factory default of 38 ampere hours, 100%, and then went down all the way to 70% because it had, it had no bearing. And I'm sure if we would have done the trivial procedure on the old battery, it would have been over 90% still. I'm pretty sure it would have been. Because this reset before showed clearly with the same battery, it showed clearly the battery was able to take the energy, take 10 kilowatt hours of charge and also deliver this energy again to drive the car with the same hardware, with the same battery, with the same battery cells and the same BMU. So nothing had changed, but only the BMU was reset to 100%. So and this proves that the BMU has an influence of how much, how long the car drives in pure electric and also how much energy the car, the battery takes. So Andre, I'm not saying you are wrong with your assumption, but I, I clearly, I probably can clearly prove the state of health has an influence of how much energy the battery takes. Um, well, this is the only comment I have picked out because he has commented on, on several occasions on this video with um, same, you say, you're ignoring this, you're ignoring this. I said, I'm not ignoring you. But if you are true what you are saying and the state of health has no influence on the battery, it could only mean the battery itself degrades. And this would be insane. This would be a total failure of the whole system. If the battery would degrade that fast, don't buy the PHEV. But I don't think this is the case. Okay guys, so far this quick update. I told you it's a quick update. <laughs> there are so many questions and so many comments on there. So please direct all your questions about the calculations directly to Gerard. I'm, I hope he is looking into this, but if you tag him, um, he will get a notification uh, through YouTube. And I'm sure he jumps onto this and um, gets some of your questions um, explained if he can. Well, he is not an expert in this whole thing. He, he was able to look into the code. He's got an idea. He could see the parameters in there 
the 0.3% and the 1%. And he's, he's got an idea how everything works and that's what I tried to explain in, in my um, previous video. But he's certainly not an expert and maybe he has missed something or maybe there's another calculation happening which he couldn't see or I don't know, I don't know. I'm just speculating now so please get in contact with um, Gerard directly, leave, the, leave your questions down below under his comment and I'm sure he will get back to you at some stage and um, get this all explained. Thanks for watching guys, <laughs> thanks for your support. This is Andy from Unplug TV Australia signing off for the moment. We will see us soon again in the next video of course and as always thanks for watching. Okay guys, see you then, bye bye.